Welcome back. Well, one of the issues at CPAC and indeed for conservatives around the world is how to deal with radical Islam. And one of the answers, at least we believe this at The Rebel, is the answer to radical Islam is moderate Islam, liberal Islam. That's why we love people like Raheel Raza. And one of Raheel's allies is our next guest. Zudi Jasser is the leader of, I want to get this just right, the American Islamic Forum for Democracy. It's great to talk with you. I've met you before. Tell me a little bit about yourself and your organization and your mandate. Well, I'm the son of Syrian immigrants, was born in the U.S., uh, was in the Navy for 11 years, and after 9-11, we formed our organization with the mission to separate mosque and state. People didn't get it. They said, why don't you just counter terrorism? We said, well, the root cause is the Islamic State identity, whatever form it takes. It's a theocracy. Jihadists want to die for their Islamic State identity. I would only die for America, for freedom, for liberty. I want nothing to do with theocracy, no different than our founding fathers did. So... Come 2013, ISIS comes to fruition, and people realize, oh, that's why you're about the separation of mosque and state. Now here at CPAC, we have a president who finally has taken us beyond the eight years of nonsense of trying to debate what we call it. We agree that it, it's related to Islamism. It is Islamism is the problem. The precursor of violent radical Islamism is the nonviolent Islamist. So to really fix the problem, the cancer, if you will, you don't just cut it out cut out the tumors of ISIS and Al-Qaeda, you have to treat the, the root cause, which is political Islam, and, and go through a reformation, no different than the West did. I mean, that's an enormous thing to say, just go through a reformation, just that. I mean, that, that's about the biggest thing possible. Um, some people use the phrase reformation. Uh, another phrase that's used for a period of, of Christian civilization is enlightenment, I think. Lib uh, our friend Raheel uses the phrase uh, progressive, I think. Let me ask you this. How many Muslim people in traditionally Muslim countries or in the West share your vision? I think you can look in Iran now to see the revolutions. I think you see in Egypt, one year of the Brotherhood running Egypt did more to, to mobilize the anti-Islamists to bring 10 million to the streets, more than went to the streets against Mubarak. So while the Islamists are a significant plurality of 30, if not 40 percent, the majority, I believe, reject Islamism, and that's been shown over and over again. They're failing. The AKP is only in power in Turkey because they're now beginning to use autocratic means to stay in power, which always happens. So ultimately, while reformation is part of it, that's not going to happen in my lifetime. The, the writing of new Sharia books that are commensurate with modern society. What will happen in our lifetime is a John Locke, a James Madison, a Thomas Jefferson of Islam, which rejects the priests or the imams controlling government and says, you know what, we need to help build civil societies that are not run by theocrats, but run by a principles of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Our Muslim reform movement has a two-page declaration. That should become the litmus test of which Muslims are our allies, those that believe in those two pages, and which Muslims are our enemies or, or should, we should not be working with, those who reject any of the principles in that document. Uh, one of the reasons we love Raheel Raza, and I know I'm singing her praises here, but she has helped me think of these things clearly, and I know that you're allies with her, is that I look around the American, and by American I mean the United States and North America, Canada, I, the voices I see speaking for Islam are typically the Islamist voices, either explicitly Islamist or Muslim Brotherhood who are Islamists, but they're a little bit more politically savvy. How can we give voice to Muslims who want the separation of mosque and state? Patriotic Muslims, I think that's a phrase I first you, heard you use. How can we boost the signal for folks with your thinking instead of just hearing in the public square from the other side? Uh, Ezra, that's the most important question, really. We need a whole-of-society approach. I talked yesterday on the main stage about the need to form a commission on radical Islam, where we have all of government, from State Department, DOD, to uh, the legislature, Congress, to the White House, where we all of government says it's not just terrorism. Countering violent extremism means nothing. We need to focus the crosshairs of every project, homeland security, immigration, foreign policy, on countering Islamism, not, not terrorism, which is a tactic, but Islamism, their end goal, which is the Islamic State. So once you do that, you will marginalize the Islamists. So the reason they have the voice of most organizations is they are the establishment. They're the ones who are petro-Islam. You know, the, the, petro, the billions of petrol went to fund the Islamist organizations. 
the rest of us either reject them or we've not had the wherewithal, the organization, the collectivism to come together and say, you know what, we reject the Islamists. We are inherently anti-collectivists and that's why we've not been organizing. And I think the rest of the world, all of you, need to begin to hold Muslims accountable and not have this bigotry of low expectations. Hold us accountable to the same things you do to every other faith community. Anti, anti-Semitism should be rejected. Anti, uh, you know, homophobia should be rejected. All the things that you see in mosques that are just ignored by people like Prime Minister Trudeau should be focused on and not have this bigotry of low expectations. Well, that was going to be my last question. I know you're a busy man. Everyone wants to say hello to you here, Zudi. In Canada, we have a prime minister who uh, has explicitly not drawn a line between Islam that he will visit and truck with and talk to and Islam that's too far. There's this one video clip we've shown on our channel a lot where he specifically mentions a mosque in Montreal, the Asuna Wahhabi Mosque, which the Pentagon has said has been a place where terrorists were recruited. The various exposés show they teach full extremism, you know, violence should be the remedy for adulterers or gays. So Trudeau has explicitly not rejected those mosques. He campaigns in those places, and I'm not even talking about his policies. What would you say about Trudeau? He wants the Muslim vote, but what would you say to him about the fact that he still trucks with extremists? I think it's, you know, at best it's a it's a profound ignorance and at worst it's an intentional almost bigoted elevation of the worst elements of our society of our community in that he can go I mean there's a sound bite of him going into a mosque where the women are behind a curtain and he's saying to the sisters upstairs he can't even see their face and he says to the sisters upstairs would he go into a synagogue or a church and and ask the same thing no he needs to adhere I would ask him to adhere to his same leftist values feminism, gay rights, the things that he claims to march in, while he's marching in a gay parade, he's wearing Islamic socks. It just doesn't make sense because the people he's consorting with actually want the demise of the Canadian culture, the demise of Canadian contract of society. So the left needs to hold him accountable to their values. And if you look at our Muslim reform movement, it includes many feminists like Raheel, uh, Ezra Nomani, Shireen Kudosi, and they're just horrified by what they see on their own side. I'm a conservative, so I have less influence on the left, but I can tell you on the right, this is the message that I'm giving here at CPAC. Well, I really appreciate you taking time out for us, and thanks for your comments about Canada. Great to see you again, Zudi. Time. Thanks for all you do. Thanks. Cheers. We're at CPAC. It's a giant conservative conference in Washington, D.C. i got to say, I've seen some Canadians here, though. Hey, if you want to see all our videos from CPAC, go to the rebel.media slash rebelcpac.